Okay. So basically now we are going to implement uh, no, the calls towards the server and our example. Okay, so I just took uh, what's available on the GitHub uh, as usual. Okay, in the lecture examples, week number 10. So there's the example for last time, but there's also the React QA, question and answers. And th there, always, there will always be a client and server folder from now on. So we have uh, two processes running. One is the server and the other is the React development uh, server. Okay? And uh, this is nothing new. I just copied uh, from the old folders. So the week before for the client, so it's a client with the roots, routes, sorry, implemented, so slash add, slash edit, and so on. So it's a working client. The only thing that does it, that we don't like today is that the data is static. It's embedded in the code, okay? And now we would like to load it from the server. And for the server, I simply took the last version of the server that we developed. Uh, I think it was this one, for week 04, right? Yes, week 04, QS server, okay? was simply copy the inside here in the server, okay? Changing the name of the folder, so we have client and server, that's all. So that is uh, what is open here now in the Visual Studio Code, okay? During the break, uh, I already did everything needed to run the code, so npm install, npm run dev on the client, and nodemon, so npm run dev, that's this one, right? So npm run dev. And on the server, they just uh, uh, node mon index.js, okay? But nothing new until now. So, um, first of all, <coughs> uh, the server should be almost ready to, to be used, right? So we implemented the APIs, that was uh, you know, quite a few weeks ago. And now we need to work on the client, okay? So first of all, we need to write, uh, as we said, uh, no, uh, the fetch methods. So let's start with the easiest one. Let's fetch uh, the question, for instance, okay? Uh, I remind you wha wha how th the application looks like. So that's the application, okay? That's the question, and there's a list of answers related to that question, okay? At the moment, uh, nothing is loaded from I, our API web server. It's just everything coming from uh, localhost 5173, that is the React development server, okay? So the data is embedded in the code, okay? So it's just uh, here inside uh, somewhere, uh, get answers, I'm not sure, yeah. That's the file, QA model, uh, and the data is here, okay? That's in the code. Okay. So, as we were suggesting before, let's keep things ordered as much as possible for what we can do in, during, you know, the lecture where we have uh, not that much time, okay? But so, let's create a file, API.js, okay? Uh, okay. So, in the source folder, okay? So, this is a JavaScript file, like the QA model and so on. That's something that will be part of the code of the application. API.js, okay? I call it .js, it doesn't really matter, but since this will only uh, contain JavaScript code, there's no real need to call it JSX, okay? But, I mean, JSX is still fine, no problem. Okay, so, let's try to write the first function that loads the uh, question from the server. Of course, we will write an async function in the cells that uh, the operation will be asynchronous, so we would like to handle it uh, sh with a promise, okay? So return a promise, and when the promise is solved, so things are loaded from the server, we will uh, update the application, okay? And in React, it means we will change a state, and this state will trigger the update of the interface, okay? And React will do it for us. Okay, so uh, let me, yeah, get the question. So. I mean, we have many different ways of writing these functions, okay? This is just one possible way, okay? A sync function, 
I mean, you could do const something equal async and so on. So whatever, whatever you like. Async function, you give a name, get the question, question uh, by ID. Uh, and we will call call uh, API whose name is API questions. Uh, how do we know? Well, we design the server, right? So uh, for the exam also, you will design both the server and the, and the client. So we will decide which is the name that you assign to each API endpoint. If we don't remember, as myself, <laughs> no, there's the wrong. Uh, readme the other one uh, we check the readme okay so we have the get api questions id okay and we can also check uh, the implementation so uh, we still would like to be sure of what we did get api questions with the id it will return a question given by the parameter that is on the url okay in the form of a json fine Okay, let's try to use it. So, let's say uh, ID. Okay, so ID this way. This is just a comment. We can write whatever we want. Okay? But the point is um, we need to write a fetch. Okay? We are inside the browser, so fetch is available. This is called running in the browser, right? Uh, so sorry, it means document dot fetch, but we don't really need to specify document. Okay, uh, fetch, and then it will be uh, question. Question. Okay. Actually, we need to specify the full URL, so the schema, the domain, the port, and so on. Also, in addition to the path. Okay. So. Either we write uh, things like this, localhost 3001, uh, API question, questions, uh, and then uh, plus ID, yeah, or we can do something like this. You remember the template literals, right? What's the... Oh, what is the... Oh, okay. One of the many possible ways in which you can write a string in JavaScript. Nothing new, okay? That's from the first lecture. Okay? I mean, do what you prefer. You can use plus. Uh, indeed, that's what I'm going to do in a sh uh, now. Okay? So... This first part is always the same because that's the address of the server, okay? Since we are going to write another API, so let me do like this. Const uh, base URL or URL, whatever you want. Uh, URL. Okay. So that's a string. Uh, fetch URL plus question ID. Okay, and then, well, we need to decide how to handle the promise. Fetch returns a promise, either dot then dot, ca dot catch or try catch and with the await, okay? I mean, the await made things uh, quite readable, so I suggest you to use await, but I mean, it's not mandatory, okay? Because then uh, you need to remember to use the try catch at a certain point. And the await means that in case of successful, a successfully resolved promise or fulfilled promise, we get a value const uh, what's response? No response. Yes. Okay. We get a response, and you say that we say that when we talked about the fetch, it is the response object in which we need to take the body part, okay? And if it's in JSON format, we can directly use a method which is made available by, uh, by the response object. So response.json, okay? And since uh, by design we decided to simplify things, that's just uh, you know, uh, a way to simplify things, that uh, 
In our application, all data exchange happens uh, in the form of JSON uh, format, okay? Uh, we are sure that the, the server will always send us a JSON in the body of the RESPO because we decided to do this, okay? You could decide something else, okay? But uh, I think it's reasonable also not to have uh, endpoints that uh, return different things and so having to remember all, this kind, all these things here that uh, uh, we always use the JSON format, which by the way is a very well used approach uh, around uh, in, in actual applications, okay? If you have a look uh, in the network tab, uh, okay, here, what happens in actual applications, and you can always open this, this tab, remember, in any, any website you are, okay? Google, Facebook, whatever, simplest, uh, complex ones, doesn't matter. And you will see that a lot of exchange takes place in JSON format. And JSON is not a limitation for us. JSON, a number is a valid JSON, okay? So, I mean, no problem for that. Um, const uh, quest question, right? This is the question. Question. Just remember that JSON returns a promise as well. So we should await, okay? And then, if everything was fine, response uh, OK. OK, that's a possibility, otherwise you check the status code. Uh, we just decide what to return to the, uh, to the caller, so to who is calling the get question. OK? Uh, yeah, we need to... Uh, return uh, an object. This will be the actual question object that we have here, okay? The new question something, okay? We would like to substitute this uh, question which now is fixed in the code with something that comes from the server, okay? Um, okay, so we have the same fields, uh, uh, ID, uh, and we need to you know, take this question. Let me do this uh, thing just to write less code, okay? E question, okay? So I can write E, I, D, and so on, okay? So it's just a shorter code, okay? Or you can say const E equal to await response, but it's just you know, a matter of uh, you know, writing code and being clear. If I write question here, remember this contains a question, otherwise, you know, with the uh, with, uh, single lecture, it's always, it's difficult to understand what's happening in the code, but sometimes it's convenient, okay? Text, uh, e-text, uh, and so on. If you don't remember what to do, you check the model. It was a uh, question, id text, uh, question and date, okay? Uh, question, was author or question? Question, question, I was, why, why have author in the solution? Uh, let, let's see what I did on the server. I don't remember. Okay? So, the server. Uh, index. Question. Get questions. Get question. Get question is a function that interrogates the DB. I put author. Okay? So, that what comes from the server to the client. Okay? If you are not sure, you just run a a query with the REST client and see what comes out, okay? So, uh, author, e author, and then the date. And here you need to decide, I keep the DGS format or not? Uh, well, at the moment there's no DGS, right? So, it's always a bit, uh, you know, um, messy. <laughs> if you don't uh, have, uh, you know, strict rules and you follow your strict rules. Of course, uh, what comes out from the JSON is just a string. Uh, JSON can only handle strings, okay? Cannot handle uh, objects uh, like the DJS objects and so on, okay? You can handle objects in the form of, DJ, uh, of uh, JSON objects, so curly bracket, something, okay? But there you can put numbers, uh, 
and uh, strings uh, and basic uh, uh, primitive values okay uh, I think I don't use it so let's put it uh, e date and let's see okay uh, so you might have noticed that here I created the object without uh, using the model so I could have say the new question passing the parameters and so on well that's up to you I mean um, you know how objects work in JavaScript so you don't really have classes so it's up to you if you really would like to keep this uh, constructor functions or not okay we kept it in the beginning so we practice with them a little bit but maybe in your applications you don't really need them so uh, I mean it's up to you to decide what to do okay let's forget uh, about this uh, constructor functions uh, at least for the moment okay so I return this value and by the way this return will be the value of the fulfilled promise of the async function which I just defined okay okay else uh, if there's a problem what can I do well uh, in the async function what what I can do either I do you know return new promise resolve reject and so on or if I'm in a condition like this something reasonable that you can do is to throw something okay throw and uh, uh, a value and this will be the value of the rejected promise so the value that you catch with the catch handler when you call the, the the function okay throw question okay I don't know what to throw I mean the response was not okay so let's let's throw what I arrived from the server if I wrote the server in a reasonable way that is the way I recommend in case of error send back a JSON object that contains uh, some information about the error back to the client so you have something to handle in the client if you would like to handle errors okay uh, but we are not caring too much about uh, this part at the moment okay so that's more or less uh, what we need here right so well this is a, a file uh, uh, so basically it will become a module and it needs to be export you need to export something and then import something on the other side okay so uh, the way I I recommend you to write this module is uh, to export one single object that you call API okay that is an object that contains all the function that you will define now there's just one question get question actually but then there will be more okay and export the default uh, API okay or you can export the API as an object it doesn't really matter yeah I saved it uh, and you go into app uh, and at a certain point you import the uh, the API okay so at the end it's fine import uh, uh, API from API JS okay save of course it's not used uh, yet okay just import what you exported on the other side okay and uh, let's try to use it now okay so we need to go in the place where we can call this function okay actually we'll call api dot get question and retrieve the information about the question okay and so let's start with a simple uh, way of approaching the problem so we have a state uh, yes state question set question that contains the initial question okay oh yeah maybe uh, wh what i have here is almost identical to what i had uh, uh, on Monday okay there might be smaller differences just to you know to be a bit faster here in developing the code so this uh, state is 
if I remember correctly, was added, okay, in the meanwhile. Actually, we had just a constant value before, okay? But this is just a, a state that is gets initialized, and uh, as you see, it's not set yet, okay? But if we need to get information from the server and put it somewhere, we need to put it into a state, okay? So that's why you already prepared the, the code with this, this state, okay? So app is actually the first component get, that gets mounted in the application, okay? So the whole application starts from app, and the rest gets mounted depending on what you return in the JSX, okay? Uh, there's the router in the middle, so the, route, uh, the router will show the main page, which doesn't contain the form, so the form initially will not get mounted, but the rest, like the, the, the table with the list of the answers and so on, will get mounted, okay? But let's keep things simple and let's keep the state in app as it, it is already, okay? So we would like to load uh, the information from the server at the mount of the first component that is app, okay? So now we know how to do, okay? Use effect, effect. There should be a callback that uh, does something, okay? And then we need to decide when to run this callback. This is the easiest part, okay? So, uh, I mean, this is at mount time, at mount time, just empty array, okay? This callback will be run at the mount time. What do I write here? Okay, API, get, uh, uh, no, get question. I'm writing in the right place. Yeah, should be. Get questions, right? Huh. It doesn't suggest uh, correct well, question. Okay. Okay. Let me check. Get the question. Okay. I need to pass an ID. Okay. So let's uh, say. Well, let's put one here, okay? Just the ID of the question, okay? That was one, right? Okay. Good. Uh, and then, actually, I'm not finished. This returns a promise, okay? So I need to do something with the result value, okay? Let me try to handle this with the then and catch. You can uh, do a wait as well. But if you do a wait, you need an async function. And remember, the user effect cannot take an async function, so you need to define the async function and then call it, okay? As we did in the slides. Let's try another solution so we see something else in the meanwhile, okay? Uh, the question, uh, what do we do with the question once we get the question? Actually, as we did in the slides, we set it into the state. Set, set question, Q, Q, sorry. Okay, and then catch uh, R. So something that will come out from the async function that uh, sends the fetch, and we need to decide how to handle it. Okay. Since we are in the beginning, we didn't write that much code, and I would like to try it as soon as possible. The thing I'm going to do now is just console log r, okay? And then I will think about something more intelligent, I mean, to handle the, this uh, situation better, okay? Okay, good. There's still something that we need to do, modify. One thing is the initial state, okay? This initial question should not uh, exist anymore. We load it from the server, right? So what do we put here? Well, I recommend you to put uh, the same type of data that then you will put into the set uh, state, okay? So if it's an object, I put an empty object. If it's an array, I will put an empty array. If it's a Boolean, I put a Boolean, and so on. I mean, it's not uh, because the React gets confused, but you get confused e E, e, uh, more easily than React, okay? Oops, sorry, indeed. Uh, so that's the empty, an empty object, okay? So I, I remember that in this state, I have an object, 
okay? And then in the answer I will have a list, okay? Let's go up and delete the initial question. No, actually I cannot because I still have the initial answer. Later I will delete the initial question, okay? Uh, because I need to run in it and get answer, okay? And, uh, and then uh, let's see if the first call works and then we will create the second one to load the answers and delete everything which is uh, uh, hard coded in the in the code about the data okay so let's see if something works you're not really sure i mean uh, uh. okay you already see there's something that doesn't work let me stop and start so that's a client npm run dev okay so let me see fail to resolve import api okay dot slash okay that's for your files otherwise it goes into the node modules to search for modules uh, and packages and so on okay so save okay uh, now it works okay at least it starts without complaining okay um the server should work we didn't touch anything in the server right so um, i hope i took uh, the, the the right version so first let's reload the application and see what happens well the question is empty right? why i don't know actually i know but uh, i mean the answer is below okay always check the console always check the network tab this should be your friends okay then it will be my friend at the exam okay so i will check your application with the network tab open i already told you because i need to understand what's going on in the application and the way to understand what's going on in the application and to see i mean the, the easiest way to understand what's going on in an in an unknown application is to see what the client is asking to the server and what the server is answering to the client okay there i already get a more or less an idea of what's happening okay and then i can go into the code and see what's happening and so on but that's the easiest uh, part uh, the easiest place okay and you see that uh, actually the request that we did uh, http localhost 3001 api questions one that actually went to the server and came back because you have a request, okay? Actually, the body is empty, but you have the request headers. Where are the request headers? Here, okay? Accept, etc. Origin, localhost 5173, okay? And you also have a response header. So the, ans the answer from the server arrived to the browser. And you can also see it here. You see it here, right? There's a Morgan that logs the request. So the server has seen a request and it has given an answer to 200, so it was HTTP OK. And actually the data is also in the browser. It's here. OK? That's the raw data, the JSON data. OK? Which the browser is so kind to format it, to format for you. OK? In a nice way. Because it recognizes JSON. OK? But the the problem is, it's written there, the response pad is not available to scripts because course missing allow origin. This is a course request, the stuff that we saw on Monday, okay? Because the origin is 5173 and the destination is 3001, okay? Same, same schema, HTTP, same host, local host, different port, so it's a different origin, okay? So, we are almost done. We need to allow course request because we trust the client from our server. So if you see the response headers, okay? See, in the response header, there's no allow origin anything. Not localhost 5173, not asterisk, okay? So first uh, thing you should do on your server this is just once and then uh, it's valid for uh, the whole server okay uh, that's index right so that's the server const course require 
what we saw in the slides uh, on Monday, of course. Okay. And then app use course. Okay. Uh, at the moment, uh, it's enough to allow all course requests. Okay. Uh, next time we will talk about authentication and so on, so we will we'll have to fix this part uh, and allow only requests uh, from our origin and so on. Okay, but since today I'm talking about the client and not the server, that's enough for the server. Let's save it. Don't forget that you need to install the course uh, module, okay, the, p the package. So let's stop npm install course, course. Okay, restart, and now it works. Okay, so the server is working. Uh, let's try re to reload the application. Okay, now the request went through. And you also see that there's a new header in the response. Okay, access control allow origin, asterisk. Okay, for the moment it's enough. I'm not so, so security safe. Okay, for what we say the last uh, time, okay? But, uh, I mean, I, I, I just want the server to work at the moment, okay? And then, of course, we will talk uh, more about this uh, when we have authentication and more private data to, to return. Okay, so now we got the information. It's actually the exact same request and response. Nothing changed in the response. The only thing is that now it's accessible to scripts. Okay, so the script, after doing the fetch, it will not get an error as before. So in the, in the API, okay, the fetch before returned a, a, netro, a network error, okay, which actually was a course and so on. So actually it was not a network error, but the browser made it seem a, a network error. So we went to throw and so on, so we went to the console log. Okay, now everything is working, so we return the object, and the object is set here in the application as the content of the state. So set question Q, so we will have the content loaded into the state of the application. We can also check components uh, up. You see the first state is actually the answer that we loaded from the server. Okay. So basically, you have already solved uh, half of the lab of next week, <laughs> okay? <laughs> no, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, it's not uh, really half. Actually, we have to load two things. In the lab, actually, you only have one list to load. That's a list of fields. Actually, here we have a question and a list of answers. So let's try to load the list of answers, okay? So we need to do something similar, a fetch on another endpoint that basically gives us all the answers for a given question. Okay, so first we, br we write it. Okay, a sync function, uh, function. Once you write one and do it well, do it in the lab, you know, test it very well, and then you copy it. Uh, copy and paste and create all the others. Nothing really different, okay? Except from a few parameters of the fetch and so on, okay? So, the other is, uh, uh, I don't remember. I go and check, okay? I check the documentation, that's why, no, that's not one. Uh, that's why it's important to have a reasonably good documentation, right? So. There was an API which is called questions ID answers, okay? Copy. And then if I'm not sure, if I think it's wrong, I go into the code and double check, okay? Questions ID answers, okay? Fine. I, I u simply use it, okay? So let me do paste here, okay? That's a comment. And uh, let me just copy and paste, okay? That's exactly what you should do. Copy and paste, then modify things. So this calls uh, 
API questions answers. So I would call it uh, get answers uh, by question ID. This is just uh, my name. I mean, it's internal of the application. Uh, so use the uh, same symbol names, okay? Not get this and get that, okay? <laughs> but it's just, uh, you know, common sense. Uh, response await fetch questions slash uh, answers. Right? Uh, cons question answers, okay? Of course, I can write only E, I, and so on, but I mean, use the sensible name so you understand something when you do things. Answers, uh, uh, actually, answers, uh, answers uh, will be an array, okay? So I would like to return the array, so answers, uh, map, and uh, uh, answers map uh, E, E, uh, uh, and I create the objects. So I return the object. Uh, oh, okay, just be careful. When you are returning an object in an arrow function, you need to surround it uh, with the uh, uh, round brackets, otherwise it's taken as open curly bracket of the code of a function, okay? It's just because there's this ambiguity, okay? So ID, text, uh, respondent, uh, oh, oof. respondent, respondent, uh, score, date, uh, so, score, e score, date, okay, not sure what I put here, uh, question ID. I must tell you, I don't remember if uh, I wanted a DJS object or not, uh, let, let's check, okay, let's check later. So return answer map, I need to close this uh, bracket. So return, okay. Else uh, throw answer. So, okay. So I've taken the old one, copy and paste, modify as needed, and now I can use it. Hopefully I, I didn't do any mistake, okay? So let's use it. Copy the name and go into up. And so where do I put this uh, call? Well, I mean, there's a use effect. It runs uh, at mount time. At mount time, I should uh, load uh, the question. I should load the answers. I mean, just put it into the into the same callback, it's fine. Another option is to create a second use effect. Again, dependent on uh, an empty array with the other, uh, uh, with the code to load the second uh, information you need, so the list of answers, okay? Actually, doesn't really matter, okay? As long as you have the same set of dependencies, so empty array, empty array, you can create one hook, you can create two hooks, it doesn't really matter, okay? Uh, if you need to enforce the fact that one is called before the other and so on, that, that's a different thing, okay? But at this point, I don't really care if I, I load the question before the answer or vice versa, okay? So, API. Uh, API. Get answer by question ID, one. So I don't like when I duplicate stuff, okay? So cost, uh, uh, what's the name I used? Uh, question ID, ID one. So this is question ID, and this is question ID. Oh, question ID. Then catch, okay? Then uh, I got the answer list, answer list, that's the name I chose, 
okay? It's a callback, uh, it's an arrow function I'm defining on the fly here, right? So answer list set, uh, I could call it A, A, I mean, sorry, in English, A. Uh, but, you know, if it's a more expressive, it's better, <laughs> okay? Q, questions, okay? Set uh, uh, answer, answers, answer list, okay? Catch uh, as before, okay? R, console log R. And now, uh, I mean, we will fix it uh, later. Log R. Okay? So I saved it. Uh, the initial answer list is not needed anymore. Actually, we will delete it, okay? So we put an empty array for the reason I told you before, it will contain an array, so put an empty array so we know this will be a state that contains an array. And that's all, okay? Let me see if everything works uh, in, in the sense that, uh, well, first, uh, white does not uh, complain, and then let's see if we can comment uh, this. So the state, the static data that we put into the code, the, the hard uh, written data, okay? Let's save. Okay, it doesn't complain, so it means that these variables aren't used anymore in our application, okay? So, it's good. Uh, let's try if it works. No, it doesn't work, there's something wrong. Okay, let's check what's wrong. I forgot something probably. Get answers by question ID is not a function. In app.js 88, that's a bit difficult, right? Well, actually, I must tell you, you see, this is uh, gray, right? I forgot to export it, okay? So it's not used. Get answer by question ID. It's not used because I didn't put it here, and so I didn't export it on the other side. So I was, uh, you know, searching for a, a, a property in an object which is API that was uh, simply undefined, so it couldn't be called, okay? Save. Let's see if something works. Not yet. E date format is not a function, so, okay, that's more difficult because, uh, you know, date at a certain point probably was expected to be a DJS object. We should search in the in the code, probably during in the table rendering, I expected to to have the dot date a DJS object so I can call a format and show a certain format and so on. So this is a place where I could do the conversion in the API file. Okay, you receive a string from the server and it will always be a string because the JSON format doesn't support anything else. Number, strings, boolean, null, and I don't remember if, it was, if there was something else, okay? Uh, so it doesn't support complex objects. So if you need to transport something from the, from the server to the client and also vice versa using JSON in the other direction, you need to transform it into strings and JSON uh, values, okay? Uh, and so, when you are, you are on the other side, server or client, you need to transform it back in objects, like the JS object, if you need it. So, the JS, the JS e date. Okay. Hopefully, it works. Not yet, because I need to import the. J uh, no, not import. In this case. Uh, imp yeah, import the JS from the JS. Okay. Okay. Let's see if it works. Let's reload. Okay, good. No errors in the console. Good. Network. You see, load of one that is actually this full. Uh, URL, localhost 3001, API questions one, with the answer of the question, and then you have answers, okay? And the uh, address is API questions one, answers, response, and the whole JSON uh, content, okay? You can see in the raw format, but uh, it's not very convenient. 
and it can parse the, the browser can parse it for you and you can check what's inside okay and as we told I told you on Monday there are two requests okay because I told you the callback gets executed twice not once because we have this strict mode of react but l let's leave it uh, activated because it's very useful for debugging purpose it's fine to leave it activated for the exam okay no problem if something doesn't work in this way it's probably because there's, there's something in the logic of your application that doesn't work there's a question right what if you in the file, um, basically yes no problem i mean it works uh, no. ah if i ah up okay yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ah, okay, we can try, okay? <laughs> Let's see what happens. So all the times, it means uh, you forgot the... So, like, I need to create two different user sets? Or yeah. Like, I want to uh, get the answer once when I... Okay. No, that's a point we were discussing on the slides. Thank you for raising it. Uh, actually, uh, no, where was it? Uh, use cases. I mean, uh, you don't always need a use effect, right? So, where is it? No, sorry, it was before. So you can call it from uh, um, from uh, user uh, from uh, handlers, okay? So if you know that it should be called when a new component is mounted, use effect with the empty array. If you know that you should call it when the user does something, it clicks on something, you have an event handler, there you can call whatever you want. You can call API.getQuestion, put it there, okay? It will be run only when the event happens, okay? Because the point of having the use effect is that we would like to attach it to something which is an event in React, okay? That is the mount of the component or something has changed in the properties and in the state. Yes, but for example, the user is selecting the question. Yes. So end event and then the API on the event. Yeah. The answers depend on the question, so I need to use another. Yeah, the answer depends on the question, yes. Uh, but in this case, yeah, you should do as we did in the slide. So um, you should separate the use effect and you should uh, load the question that corresponds to the question ID that corresponds to what you are interested in or the, what the user has selected. Okay. And so here you cannot just simply load it at mount time. You should have a default value. So the question ID at mount time, if there is a question. Okay, and then you, have, you need to have a state where you have this question ID, which will be changed by the user, okay? And uh, when this changes, React will run the use effect and will load what you want, okay? But, but if this happens in an in a event handler, you can also do the loading in the event handler and forget about the use effect and leave the use effect as it is, okay? Only if you don't want to do it in the event handler. So where you write set state, a new question ID. Where you write set state, a new question ID, because the user has done something. There you can also do app API get a question. Not in the use effect, okay? Or you can have a more complicated thing. So you set the state and you run something because you changed a state. Okay, and then you need the use effect. It's not very clear, right? <laughs> okay. Let's suppose, okay, so le let me commit this solution. Okay, this solution works. Uh, and more or less, it's, it's fine. I mean, for loading uh, all the data from the server, right? So let's commit this solution. And then let's play a little bit. So, uh, yeah, index, uh, because we added the course and so on. So, uh, example developed in, during the, the lecture, okay? 
push. Okay. So you can go back in the history on in GitHub in case you would like to see. Uh, okay, what what we did? Uh, no, there's no need to do anything. Okay. Let's now assume, okay, that you have a state where you have the information about the question ID. Okay, that at the moment is just a constant here, right? So const question ID question. Question ID, set question ID, okay? Uh, use state uh, one, okay? So this question ID doesn't exist anymore, okay? So the application still works uh, as before, right? Nothing has changed. But the point you were saying is that uh, if somebody changes uh, this question ID because the user interacts with the page, okay? So let's say we need the... Uh, we need some place where the user can interact. This is the browser router, so it's a bit uh, difficult to insert it here. Uh, well, let, let's try, okay? Um, set uh, question ID, okay? Uh, set question ID, that is, uh, you know, the, the, the function that modifies the state. Okay, this is useful for everybody because I saw a lot of uh, exams which are full of user effect which are useless. Okay, so understanding this thing is useful for everybody. Okay, I'm, I'm forcing a little bit uh, modification into this example, but I think it's useful. That's why I would like to spend some time here. Um, and so we have um, an answer. Com Component uh, where there's the answer table that there's the answer root was in up. Uh, so there's, there's the answer root before, right? Uh, so, yeah, okay. Let's put it here, okay? Let's put uh, uh, an uh, input type uh, uh, text, uh, uh, text, text, uh, um, value equal to props uh, uh, question ID. I need to pass it uh, yet. Uh, on change, uh, let me go to new line, event uh, set uh, props set question ID. This is just a controlled form, okay? That I'm writing on the spot. Event uh, target value, okay? Uh, I need to pass the question ID, so I need to to have it here. Question ID, question ID. Okay. Okay. So there's there's an input from the user. Okay. It's ugly, I know. Okay. But just to try. Okay. Let's assume that some somebody uh, decides to put. Uh, well, it's just did something but like two okay at the moment nothing happens because uh, I mean yes uh, something has happened in the sense that uh, there's a state in up uh, and the state is two okay so the question ID is two but I didn't link uh, this uh, change to anything right it's just a matter of what is shown in the in the interface in the controlled form okay now let's try to link it in the rest of the application okay so we have two possibilities. One is the one that your colleague was saying, okay? So let's say, uh, uh, this depends on question ID, okay? That's a state, that's a dependency on the state. So every time the state changes, because of the user input, we reload the information from the server. Of course, it will break because uh, it will be an empty string or at a certain point it will be two and there's nothing with the question ID two in the server, okay? But to, at least we will see the behavior, okay? So I save it, okay? So let me reload the application, okay? So we start from one and then we put two, okay? I just selected not to send the, the empty one, okay? You see that I sent uh, request for 
API questions too, and also for the answers. Okay? Two. Okay? That's one possibility. Fine. Okay, no problem. Might be reasonably good. In the sense, if the dependency uh, network, let's say, is not too complex, it's probably fine. It's what we saw on the slides, right? But we can also implement things in a different way. Okay? So, let me try. So instead of having this uh, question ID here, let's, let's leave it as it was, only at mount time, okay? And let's change the event handler, okay? So we go to the event handler, okay? Uh, you know what's the value right here? So I need to open the bracket. Uh, yes, this is the bracket of the on change. So let me say const uh, uh, new ID, okay, if target value, okay. And then we can do API get question, uh, get question, okay, that's enough. New ID, okay dot then as we did before okay dot then uh, we need a set state okay so uh, we get uh, the answer that was q uh, props set uh, question q okay let's forget for the uh, you know the catch and so on for the moment Okay, and then even target value is the new ID. Okay, I just don't like to have the same variable written twice because then I forget to change one. Okay, that's the only reason I, I, I put it here. Okay, so I need to pass the set question. Set question. Set question. Okay, question, what's it, set, question, right? So what's wrong? Ah, sec, okay, set question. Okay, so now, again, reload the application, nothing changes. I put two, okay? You see, there's already the request, okay? This has started from an event handler. Didn't start from the use effect. Okay? So you can start request towards the server wherever you want. Okay? And then, typically, with the response, you actually do the same thing. This is that, uh, uh, you see, I, I do props, set question. I do the set question because that's a place where I put the result coming from the server. Okay, now it seems a bit messy. I, I agree with you, but also I didn't plan the application to do this kind of things. Okay, otherwise I, I might have moved, uh, you know, this uh, uh, question ID uh, state in another place, in another component where it's more convenient for me, and so on. Okay, so I just put a, a box just to show you an event created from the user and in which you can do, you know, all the operations you want could be a button, could be anything, okay? But the result is exactly the same. We call the, the server, okay? We call the server, and the server set the state, okay? It just, it didn't originate from the use effect. It originated from another place that is uh, the event handler, okay? Both are run outside the render phase, okay? The event handler are just registered and until now you have used only to change states. But you can do other operations as well, like you know, running a synchronous function that goes to the server and asks for information, and then when, when you have the answer, they do other things like setting the state and so on. Okay? So that's the, what you can do to uh, go to the server and ask for new information. Okay? What's better? 
Well, actually, I don't know. Until I have a full picture of the application, I cannot tell you one solution is better than the other. Okay? Probably in this very, very simple example, in this very, very simple um, application, maybe the use effect is cleaner. You don't. You have to write a, a bit less of code. Okay? But then, let's say, suppose that you click. Or, I mean, the user clicks, or uh, you change something in the interface, and you change the page in the router. Okay, so it means you component one component gets unmounted, the other gets mounted, and so on. I mean, the best place where to do operation is the in the event handler. Okay, unless you really need to load, uh, you know, new information that is related only to the new component. Okay. If it's something that needs to be stored in app because it, uh, it's an app state, like uh, could be, I don't know, like uh, uh, yeah, that, that's the example you have in the lab, but it's not very suitable. Like if which filter is selected, and you want to keep the filter information at the top of your application, and the user interacts with this filter. I mean, uh, it doesn't make that much sense that uh, in a route that uh, where you have uh, 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 where you simply show the list of films, uh, you have a dependency on something which is, you know, passed as props uh, that comes from another place and so on, and that you need to change only when the user does something. Okay, it's easier to write the code in the event handler, because if you see the code in the event handler, you immediately know that this code is triggered when the event happens, okay? If it's in the dependency of the use effect, you need to have a clear idea of all the use effects in all components and which prop, how, how states are propagated through, through props uh, to all components and so on, to understand what, which code is running now because something has changed in state and props, okay? It's not impossible. It just becomes more difficult as the size of the application grows, okay? So if you think uh, it's reasonably, it's reasonable to, you know, do the operation in the event handler, do it in the event handler because it's more readable just for this reason, okay? I know that sometimes, especially for the exam, especially when you are in a rush for you know finishing the project and so on, sometimes you don't uh, have so you think it's faster you know to use the use effect. Okay, these changes I put the use effect with that dependency I do something. Okay, but this becomes uh, you know quickly unmanageable. It's difficult to manage because once you have introduced one, two, three, four dependencies at a certain point. You don't understand anything anymore, okay? Just because, I mean, it's very difficult to debug asynchronous interactions between components as the use effects uh, um, events are. I mean, the, the fact that, uh, you know, you change a dependency of a use effect and so you trigger a code of some use effects some, uh, some in some places around in your, uh, in your code, okay? In, in your application. Okay, that's the only reason why I suggest uh, that, if possible, try to do these calls in event handler. Okay, it's not a rule; it's not written in the stones. Okay, but it's more readable. There's an event, and you do something. Okay, that's immediate. Even if you know the operation happens asynchronous, but at least you know when it starts. With the use effect. You need to also think when it could start, depending on what is written in the dependency list, okay? And then uh, a lot of people arrive with four, uh, no, not four, eight, nine, ten use effects at the exam. As long as it works and uh, uh, they are able to explain the whole behavior of dependency, that's fine. But it's probably not that good, right? because you spend a lot of time in the bug and also when you are in a rush to prepare the exam, okay? Okay, so uh, I will remove this later, okay? 
just one more thing. I st we still have five minutes, okay? We try to use it. Uh, I would like to show you how simple it is uh, to uh, use a, a, you know, a loading state. You remember the server can take time to give an answer, okay? So let's try to uh, slow down the server response. I probably slow enough in this example to, to see and see what we can do here. Okay, so in app uh, we have uh, a state uh, const uh, loading, set loading, that in the beginning it's true. Okay, and it will be set to false uh, at the end. Okay. Uh, I will do it later. Okay. Uh, with the loading, I pass the loading to the table. Loading. I just show you something that reminds me that I, we are loading something. Okay. So in the answer route, uh, let's put something like. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, the uh, props, props, uh, loading, uh, yes, spinner. This is a, a, a bootstrap uh, React uh, uh, component, uh, otherwise uh, null, okay, or whatever. Spinner, you need to import it, spinner, okay. Let me reload the stuff. Okay. Okay. I didn't stop the loading from happening. Okay. So uh, the load happens quite quickly. Let's try to see how you can slow down this, the server. Okay. Let's uh, see the answers, right? It's very easy. I mean, no, result error was the result. Well, this one. Set timeout. Okay, let's say two, 2000. Okay, save uh, the server is to where well, the server crashed. What, what I did, ah, okay, I'm oh, break this miss. Okay, okay, so let's retry. Okay, you see, we don't have the answer yet. Okay, oh no, th this was uh, <laughs> something wrong on the service. Oh, yeah. Sorry, this is a basic mistake, right? We should have, you should pass a callback. Okay. You see the answer is still waiting? Uh, hopefully, no, connection refused again, what's wrong? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, thank you so much. This is more difficult to to catch, right, thank you, because we are, we are in a rush as usual. <laughs> okay, at a certain point I hopefully, yes, it gets loaded. So when it, it, it's loaded, what do you do? I mean, you just raise the, 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 the status on the, on the client, right? So set ans answer, set answer list. So we need to do th two things, okay? Set the loading false. Okay. Uh, we can also avoid, uh, you know, showing the table. So current answers. Let's put it here. Okay, the spinner. So it makes more sense. Okay. So the spinner is instead of the list. Okay. You see the, the spinner, and then it, the result comes. So it's not that much difficult. Is that when you get the answer, so you are in the den of the API, you just don't set only the data, but you also reset the loading state. Okay? So not that difficult. Try to use it at least once just to see everything works and so on. Okay? You'll try these things in the lab on Tuesday, and on Monday we will go on, and we will see how to 
do all the other important operations, add, delete, and update, okay? And how to handle them in, a, in the best way, okay? No questions, right? Okay, so see you on Monday, okay? Thank you.